I think I have to start practicing. I don't feel like. But the audience isn't going to ask, did you feel like preparing, right? Whatever, let's start. This is what I'm going to practice. Check it out. It's a nice piece. And we thought with Elvira that we are going to just show you a little bit, a little part of our practice. Actually, individual practice, as you see that I'm going to sit alone. And by the way, I shouldn't be sitting in the middle of the piano since I'm playing the left part. So that's how I have to practice. And yeah, we are going to show you a little part of our practice, how we approach things individually. And in this piece, I'm going. what I'm going to do now is what I'm going to show you is just a little section. I'm going to choose something that's a little bit more difficult. You can have a look here at the score. Come and show them like, yeah. So I'm going to do this passage because I have a run that goes down, right? And I want to work a little bit on this. And then I have a run that goes down. This is my part, by the way. Uh, you will see that there are two staffs and I have to play the, the bottom, the bass line. So I'm going to do this passage and then I'm going to go to the this part and do this passage, which is a run with double notes. Yeah, and so this is, I select now the difficult passages. I talk about this with our, with our students, but if you're not one of our students, you will, um, you will have to know that in general, you have to select also different difficult passages to work on, not just play your whole piece through because that's not going to improve it, but select also difficult passages and work on them separately until they become as good as the rest of your piece. So what I'm first going to do is what I usually do in my practice, I'm going to check the passage in slow tempo. Now I'm going to try it in a practice tempo. No, that's not good. Okay. Okay. It's not so clear. to articulate actually this because it's so low it's it's a little bit more muffled and I want it to be also light you see how much easier it is if you bring it one octave higher yeah and if it doesn't work too fast what we tell our students and what I'm telling you is don't do it, don't force it. Try a few times in a fast tempo like I did. And if you're not very satisfied, if it doesn't work, slow down. So then... And then speed up a little bit. If, if you feel that you want to try after a few times slower, Not satisfied I'm not satisfied I think it's the piano I think it's not me I think it's really the piano you know like if something doesn't work just blame the instrument <laughs> and tell your teacher hey, my piano is not so good okay so I'll do it once again uh, I will do an exercise if something doesn't work I'll give you an exercise if you have a repetitive note like this that doesn't work what you can do is once you can do it in staccato like this Then what you can do is you can do some technical exercises like rhythms. Then you can do the other rhythm. And I don't know if we made actually a video about that deal with Elvira. We made a video about that, so maybe we can link it somewhere so you can see the other, the other rhythm. I'm not going to explain the rhythms now. You have two different rhythms. This is the other. And then you try the result. It's a little bit better.
better, but it's still, I think it's also because it's so low. Is it better? Yeah. Oh, okay. So what I'm always doing, and again, slow. And listen very carefully. I have to put very few effort, but honestly, aside from the joke that you have to blame the instrument, um, it's really true that the lower register is quite heavy and it's much more difficult to produce this kind of clear sound because if I work here, you see, you hear the notes immediately. It's, it's difficult, it's quite tricky, so... Ah, it's improving, it's starting to... because I want it also to be very soft. And the next thing in the passage... It has to be really soft and get even softer when I go down, like... I want a little spark in the beginning. So this is this is what I over now actually in the video we, we thought we just shoot a very kind of um, informal very casual kind of vlog just for you to see what what we are doing in our practice just this is a little part of our practice but that's what happens in our work we just choose a passage we start working we see what's not good try to solve it go to the next passage that's it so uh, by the way, if you haven't, if you're not a subscriber yet, and if you like our videos, if you like what we are doing, and if you want to help us grow the channel, just uh, click on the subscribe button. And if you want to be informed whenever we upload a new video, also don't forget to, after you subscribe, to click on the notification bell. Then you will be informed every time we upload a new video. Have a look at Elvira's practice now. Okay, so I am actually already halfway through my practice because I started the day with some sight reading, which we both really recommend for you as well. And uh, I also warmed up with some etudes, some henna, so I'm nice and warm. And now I'm gonna start my pieces. Show them the book, by the way, if they want to get the henna. Oh yeah, this is actually a really great, I think really great uh, book. It's the Virtuoso Pianist, because there are three different sections. And the first section is really for beginners uh, and very, very useful finger exercises. And the second and third uh, part are more for some more advanced things. And it has really standard things that you see in uh, a lot of pieces that you would want to play, like thirds and scales and octaves and all these kinds of basic things. It's a great warming up. So that's already done. And now I'm going to start the Saint-Saëns. I already actually have a plan. Uh, which is also always very useful, just like Dimitar said, don't just go and practice, don't just start and have no idea what you're doing. But in order to have a plan, you have to always uh, say what is difficult about this piece. So for me, what is difficult about this piece is immediately already the beginning. It's not a passage, it's just the beginning, the main theme. Can you see the score? So here, just, the, just immediately the beginning, the main theme. difficulties for me. First of all, it's staccato. It's everything staccato. Staccato is much heavier for the hand than legato. And you much more have the tendency to lose control of it, not only rhythmically, but also in phrasing. So I sometimes catch myself having notes that are too soft in comparison to other notes. Uh, so this is one of the challenges. And the ornament, you already heard it maybe, one of the ornaments wasn't so precise. And that is... Um, Difficult for two reasons, again, so a lot of a lot of difficulties here just in this first section. Uh, it's difficult because it has to be fast and difficult because it has to not disrupt the flow. So often I tell my students with ornaments, take all the time you need, an ornament makes something more beautiful, just be relaxed. But in this case it's not possible because this is a dance and the dance just goes on and on and on and on. It cannot be rhythmically disrupted. Just show them how it's done. <laughs> okay, so I actually am going to practice with metronome. 
uh, that is so that I immediately catch myself if it's rhythmically not correct. So I'm just gonna get it. Okay, and what I'm going to do for today actually is I'm going to put the metronome on eight notes. Now you can put the metronome on all kinds of different uh, different notes and they all have their own benefits but today I'm gonna really precisely need track the rhythm I'm gonna put it on eight notes so I think that's a great starting speed didn't work out so I'm gonna try it again I'm still not happy with that that I was happy with and as you notice I'm also practicing separate hands because my left hand is supposed to be there as well is not just for beginners is not just for separate hands is not just for when you're starting out piano I very often still do separate hands so that I can focus 100% of my attention on my hand so I was pretty happy with that I'm gonna do the left hand is not happy with that It wasn't balanced. Did you hear that? I'm gonna improve that. So we need in the last note we need to hear the melody. It goes down to the G, right? But I actually played the B flat as loud. That's what I did. So I have to lean more on that G. I was relatively happy with that. So I notice, and you might not be able to hear it, but I do notice when I'm playing it that my left hand feels very stiff and awkward playing this passage, which means that I'm going to have to repeat my left hand much more. I won't show you that, but that's what I am going to do. So I'm gonna repeat it, let's say at least five times more than my right hand so that it can feel more relaxed. And I'm gonna try it once, uh, hands together. Notice that I'm not completely rhythmically correct, I'm rushing, so I'm gonna repeat it again. Ornament didn't work. Okay, so I think that was a really great start. What I'm going to do now for myself is I'm going to increase my tempo. So I'm gonna increase my tempo every time, I'm gonna repeat it a couple of times, my left hand more than my right hand. When I'm happy with that, when, when I'm happy with the result, I'm gonna actually up the tempo by 10. So I tried it on 128 now, that was kind of my basic relaxed tempo. I'm gonna speed it up now every time I'm satisfied with the result. So the next tempo I'm gonna try everything the same in is 138 and I'm going to keep on upping that tempo until I feel like it's, I already reached a kind of limit for the day. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this for approximately, I think, half an hour. That's what I'm gonna spend on this passage. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Also check out our Instagram. I think we'll soon uh, post a little video of this piece. It's such a fun piece of us playing together. So you can see also what that sounds like and see you next week. Bye.